This is Anata. Anata is a small suburb of Jerusalem. All of the citizens here in Anata are Palestinian Arabs. Despite the fact that the residents of Anata are forced to pay taxes to the Jerusalem municipality, not even the most basic of services are provided. Garbage lay strewn along the streets, and the kids are forced to play alongside it. Unfortunately, the only service offered by the municipality here is house demolition. I visited Nata in the summer of 2007 when I found out about a non-violent resistance group called the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, or ICAD, who are rebuilding homes here destroyed by the military. In the U.S., we're constantly bombarded by images of Palestinian terrorists on television, and that leads to the most dominant myth that the Israeli military destroys only the houses of the terrorists. So why was an Israeli organization, ICAD, rebuilding these homes? I was intrigued and wanted to find out more. I found out that the reasons for these demolitions had nothing to do with terrorism or any other kind of crime. And in fact, these people's houses were being destroyed because of improper building permits. Dr. Mir Margali, one of the founders of ICAD, is an historian and was previously a Jerusalem city council person from 1998 to 2002. 1,000 families built without license. On the other side, there are um, s several families that they get licenses, but most of the family, they refuse them. So we talk about around 1,000 uh, uh, houses, structures every year that has been built without license. On the, and on the other side, the municipality demolished around 100 or 150 houses. So why were Palestinians not getting permits? Later, I found out why because Israel won't issue them. That in the most emblematic city in Israel, not just in Israel, the most emblematic city for all the Jewish people, the mayor will be a Palestinian. So because this uh, fear, they implement a, a policy uh, that try to uh, convince or to encourage Palestinians to leave the city. They cannot do it by force. They cannot put them in a trucks and expel them from the country. But the idea is to make the life so hard, so hard that they will leave the city by themselves. One of the elements of this policy is, for example, not to give them licenses to building. Someone believed that if Palestinians will not get licenses, they will leave the city to other places where they can get licenses. Salim Shawamre, a victim of Israeli house demolition policy, had his house demolished four times, and he is one Palestinian that will not leave. And he is now a full-time activist living and working in Anata with ICAD. $15,000 it cost me because I applied three times to get the building permit. Uh, waiting four and a half years, paying uh, the money for the surveyors, for the engineering works, for uh, the taxes to them, but it didn't help, as I told you, at the end, they didn't give me any building permit. That's why I start building a home like others, you know, living inside with my family in 1994, until the black date in our life, which is 9th of July, 1998. And that's what we call the quiet transfer. And that is that through house demolitions, land expropriation, revoking of residency rights, making it hard to get an education, you know, stunting the, the, the economy, you create a situation where middle class people say, look, you know, there's no future here for my kids. I'm going to get out. And they can get out because they have the education, they have the skills, so they have way, the contacts. So they're culturally draining. Exactly. It's, a, it's what we call a selective transfer because if you can get rid of the middle classes who are the more educated, the more aware, the community leaders, then you leave the masses rudderless, leaderless. From my view, it's a quiet transfer policy. It's a quiet transfer policy. Uh, not giving you, you know, telling you that this is your land, no problem for us. It's your land. Register in your name. But if you want to use it, then come all the obstacles in your land. If you want to build a house on it, you can. If you want to plant it, you can. If you want to make a tent inside that, that, that land, you can. So, for what? This land is just my name. 
It's like exactly like you are, you are very thirsty. I'm giving you a glass of water, telling you this glass of water is yours, but don't drink it. Not only does Israel harass Palestinians and make it impossible for them to build on their own land, but they keep them in a constant state of terror by leaving demolition orders open-ended. This is something the bulldozers can come 24 hours after you put the demolition order or 24 years. And we know families, the Tutakh family, for example, they, they demolish the house with a demolition order that they uh, get 15 years before. And of course, uh, uh, the family said, sorry, I never get a demolition order. So they uh, show him the demolition from uh, 15 years ago. The first problem is that, of course, there are families that they can never sleep uh, quiet because you never s can know when the bulldozers will come. The stress is, is so acute that we know at least that uh, women that uh, aborted in, in these moments when, when something like this happened. It is something that can make crazy everyone, especially Palestinian family, because we have to understand for a Palestinian, ha and it's hard for us to understand because we come from the West and we move houses and we move cities and we move continents. Uh, and our house is a house, but for a Palestinian, the house is all uh, the world. This summer, ICAD was rebuilding two homes that were destroyed by the Israeli military due to licensing issues. The two families, the Hamdans and the Mustafas, were left homeless and had lost everything they owned. It was amazing to witness their resilience despite all that they had been through. We must dead the army, not the people, Israel, the army. I want to kill him. I want to uh, come here to get my uh, small cats. The army catch me and behind this uh, uh, wall throw me about my back now is a, uh, is a, a disease. I have uh, some uh, disease. Here the neighbor said, what, what is a, a disease with me? He see my hand not to be make a, a blood in a winter. Catch the, uh, the, the cup tea to make a blood come to 